Hello everyone, I'm Santanaka. Nice to meet you. Today, I will introduce a method to run macOS on Linux or Windows WSL. We will proceed by referring to a GitHub page. We will use QRNs. Let's get started right away. First, let's check the machine's specifications. There is a description of the record processor on the GitHub page, so we will verify if it meets those requirements. Since we will be using GEMU, if the requirements are not met, performance will significantly decrease, and some functions may not be available. This PC meets the requirements. Here, I will briefly explain QEMU. QEMU is open source virtualization software. It is software that allows you to create another computer within a single computer. By using technology such as Intel VTX and AMD SVM, virtual machines can run faster. The reason we checked the processor earlier was to see if it supports these technologies. I see. So by looking at the processor type, we can tell if it is supported. Yes. To move it, you can also check this with a command. So let's give it a try. If it is difficult to determine by the processor name, you can quickly check by entering the command described on GitHub. If Vmax is included in the output like this, it indicates that Intel VTX is enabled. In the case of AMD, SPM will be displayed. So, these preparations are necessary to run macOS. It's educational. Yes, so let's install QEMU. Oh, it can't be installed. Upon investigation, it seems that the following command is correct for Ubuntu 24 4. I see, it has changed since Ubuntu 22.04. This was a blind spot, it's educational. Yes, I haven't looked into the details, but it seems to work with this. It was installed, but related tools are also needed, so I will install them. Oops, QEMU was already installed. I will change the command to install only the related tools. Packages that are already installed will not be reinstalled. Only packages that do not yet exist on the system will be newly installed. In the end, we just need to copy and paste the command from GitHub, right? Yes, there might be a few changes needed, but copy-pasting should be fine. Let's keep going at this pace. To explain just in case, the next command moves to the home directory, clones the repository, and moves into the created directory. We will also check the downloaded files. The next command is related to KVM. I will explain the purpose in the video. Using a simple metaphor, it might be something like this. Remember that enabling KVM is like turning on the switch to run the virtual machine faster. This command changes specific settings, but you can think of it as setting it to ignore certain errors. The next command copies and applies the virtualization configuration file. Since we are using an Intel system, this command is applicable. I've looked inside the file, so I'll briefly explain. It enables the setting to run virtual machines within a virtual machine, improving performance. This feature is called nested virtualization. Additionally, we will adjust the settings so that some guest OSSs and applications run correctly. I don't think the swimsuit matters, but this will make the virtual machine more stable and comfortable to use, right? Yes, that's correct. And the next command is to add the current user to a specific group. Just a little more to go. We will run a script that allows us to choose which Mac OS to use. Here, we will select option 6, which is recommended. Downloading the, the file now. Please wait a moment. The downloaded file will be as follows. DMG files are disk image file formats, mainly used on Mac OS. We will convert this file to IMG format. The reason for the conversion is that this format cannot be used with QEMU. It is an unfamiliar format for Windows and Linux users. Yes, DMG files are primarily disk image formats for macOS, and it seems QEMU does not natively support this format. It seems the conversion was successful. We will use this image file to create a virtual hard disk. Uh, do we need 256 gigabytes of storage? 
The virtual disk image is a sparse file with the specified size as the upper limit. In reality, disk space is dynamically allocated according to the amount of data used. So, the disk image will not immediately consume 256 gigabytes upon creation, so don't worry. When using QMU, you are essentially achieving the same objectives as with WAMware or VirtualBox. Each tool has its own unique features and advantages, but the basic concepts and functions of virtualization are shared. Now that we are prepared, let's run the final script. Oh, something has appeared. A different window suddenly appeared. I will adjust the screen. Please wait a moment. Can other windows appear in WSL on Windows like in the video? Yes, I think it should be fine. There might be some adjustments needed. However, it is unlikely that installing QMU within a virtual machine in VirtualBox would result in a separate window appearing like this. To display the macOS GUI screen using QMU within a CUI-only Ubuntu virtual machine in VirtualBox, Using remote desktop protocols like VMC or SPICE might be effective. See you all next time. Goodbye.